Chapter 4 I ate a strand of Layla's hair this morning. The thought crossed my mind that something as weird as eating your girlfriend's hair could be the starting point to even weirder behavior. It could be a precursor to cannibalism much like harming animals as a child is sometimes a precursor to becoming a serial killer. But eating her hair was nothing more than a slightly creepy last ditch effort on my part to try and absolve myself from the from all the guilt. I dreamed that swallowing a piece of her hair uh, tethered us together somehow eliminating any fear that we might some, someday grow apart because of everything that happened so. When I woke up and plugged a strand from her head while she slept and put it in my mouth, that was eight hours ago and it feels like the strand somehow found its way around my heart and cut off the blood supply. My heart is choking that would make a good lyric. I open my phone while we <coughs> wait in line to board the plane and I type my heart chokes on its own guilt into my notes. Beneath several others, other dismissal lyrics I have pulled from random thoughts, my lyrics have really taken a depressing turn lately. Leads, Layla says, giving me a gentle nudge from behind. I am holding up the line. I slide my phone into my pocket and head to our seats. I packed very little from for this trip. For this trip. Two pairs of jeans, some shorts, a few t-shirts and the engagement ring. <laughs> I tucked it into a sock and shoved the sock deep inside a pair of my running shoes. Layla has a separate suitcase so there should be a reason for her to dig through mine. But I don't want her to find the ring. I bought it when uh, she was still in the hospital. I knew it was uh, premature but I was overwhelmed with fears of the unknown. I thought buying the ring might put some kind of energy into the universe that would make her recover faster. Her recovery has been better than expected but I have yet to respond. Propose. She doesn't even know I bought her the ring. I am still not sure when I am proposing because I want it to be perfect. It might not even happen on this trip. But I would rather have the ring and not need it then need it and not have it. I booked this trip because the last six months have been horrendous. It has taken a toll on us emotionally and physically. I am hoping going back to the place where Layla and I met will feel like a reset on our lives. I have this notion that if I take us back to the starting line we will never cross the finish line. Another potential lyric. The man in front of me is, is attempting to shove his oversized suitcase into the overhead bin. So I take the pause in the moment of the line and type a, a tweaked version of that sentence into my notes. I keep running back to the starting line because I don't want to be finished with you. Layla's recovery has been a lot more intense than my own. It was touch and go for an entire week. Once she was uh, stable, uh, stable, it was still four weeks before she was discharged. I blame myself daily for not being more careful, for not fearing Sable's instability all those months before, when she refused to stop contacting me. I blame myself for, oh, for ever thinking it was a good idea to put Layla's face out there while not expecting some sort of repercussions. I mean it's the fucking internet. I should have known better. Every post has some sort of repercussion. We desperately need this trip. We need the privacy. I break from the outside world. I just want to go back to how it all was in the beginning. Just the two of us logged up in a bedroom having the best and most random conversation between rounds of sweetie sex. I shove Layla's carry on into the overhead bin. We are in the seats 4A and 4B, the last row in first class. Layla takes the window seat. She has been unusually quiet, which means 
she was probably feeling anxious i haven't told her where we are going yet i wanted it to be a surprise but the unknown might be feeling her anxiety i hadn't really thought about that until this moment i sit down and fasten my seat belt while she closes the window's shade any guesses where we are headed i know we are flying to nebraska she says i don't even know what is what's in nebraska we are not actually staying in nebraska it's the closest airport to where we are going though that uh, should be a hint but she doesn't seem to catch on to it she grabs one of the small water bottles from between our seats and opens it i hope it's relaxing i don't know that i am in the mood of adventure i try not to laugh at the at the thought of that what does she expect that i would sign her up for rock climbing or river rafting after she has been in physical therapy for the past six months she has been through so much and i know i have been extremely overprotective but we have slowly been easing back into our old routine no one can bounce back from uh, something like that and immediately fall back into being their cheaper happy selves so there is still some ground to cover but i am confident our rhythm will come back with time leila puts her phone out of her purse before showing the purse beneath the seat in front of her we need to post a picture of you on the plane she says lifting her phone i smile but she shakes her head indicating she doesn't want me to smile i stop smiling she snaps a picture of me and then opens it in an editing app it's hard not being a little better at the idea of, of fame after what happened to us Layla never would have been injured if it weren't for social media. She finishes editing the picture and holds it up for me to approve. I always approve them. I don't really care what she posts, but to be honest, I note when I see pic when I see the picture, but them, but then I groan when I see the hashtag singer, musician, leads, Gabriel model, model really Layla. Am I trying to make it as a musician or an influencer? You cannot be the former nowadays without also being the latter. She posts the picture with the hashtags she, the, they used to say MTV was the death of the ugly musician. I mutter, not even close Instagram is the new grim reaper. It's good thing you look like you do then. Layla says she kisses me and then puts her phone back into the into her purse i turn my i turn my cell on earphone mode and drop it into the back pocket of the seat in front of me dreading the inevitable pictures Layla will force me to take before my head hits the pillow tonight i know i should be more grateful to her for wanting me to succeed it just all feels dirty now our story made a few headlines and circulated in the Nashville scene so it gave me a small bump in sales and a huge bump in followers. I am over 10,000 now but I cannot help but feel like I am capitalizing of her injuries. I feel like a sell out who never really had anything to sell out. The plane begins to taxi and Layla starts twisting the hem of her dress nervously. She is ah uh, she has already downed both bottles of our water the attack changed a lot of things about her it changed both of us a lot was taken from her because of me months of her life her confidence her security she was left with anxiety dependency issues night terrors panic attacks memory loss the carefree and confident girl I feel in love with no longer sits next to me instead I sit next to a girl who seems like she is fighting not to crawl out of the skin she is in it's like uh, all her resilience is buried beneath layers of scar tissue now maybe that's why I have never let her basically take over as my manager while she recovers I do what she says because my career is the only thing that she seems to give her a sense of purpose keeps her mind off everything that's happened and maybe that's how she deals with it by turning the 
one thing that caused all of this into a positive thing every aspect of our lives other than my career has suffered leila say, says it's good we have that small sliver of positivity to hold on to i don't want to deprive her of that but i kind of miss the days when she didn't take my career as seriously i miss it when she encouraged me to quit the band in order to uh, preserve my own happiness i miss how she used to pull my guitar out of my hands she, uh, so she could crawl on top of me i miss it when she didn't care about what was posted to my instagram page but mostly i miss just being myself around her lately i feel like i have been inching away from the person i was so that i can become the person she now needs is the seed belt signs of yet she asks her face is buried in the sleeve of my shirt she is gripping my hand honestly i hadn't uh, even realized we <coughs> had taken off it's like i live inside my own head now more than i live in reality not yet she must be extremely nervous right now if if she cannot even lift her eyes to look for herself i bring my hand to the side of her head and press my lips into her hair she tries to hide it but anxiety is not an invisible thing i can see it in the way she holds herself in the way her hands twist at her dress in the way her jaw hardens i can even see it in the way her eyes dart around when we are in public as if she is waiting for someone to come around the corner and attack when a ding indicates the seat belt signs are off and it's safe to move around the cabin she finally separates herself from me her eyes flitter nervously around the cabin as she takes a mental note of her surroundings she lifts the shade and gazes out the window at the clouds absent mindedly bringing her hand up to the scar on the side of her head she is always touching it sometimes i wonder what she thinks about when she touches it she has no memory of that night only what i have told her but she rarely asks about it she never asks about it actually her knee is bouncing up and down she shifts in her seat and then glances back into the coach her eyes are wide like she is on the edge of a panic attack she has had two full of panic attack in the past month alone this is how they both started her her touching her scar her fingers trembling her eyes full of fear her breaths labored you okay she knows but she doesn't make an eye contact with me she just blows cut Uh, blows out several slow and quiet breaths as if she is trying to hide from me that uh, she is attempting to calm herself down she closes her eyes and leans her head back she looks like she wants to crawl beneath the, beneath her seat i need my pills she whispers i knew she didn't seem right i reach to the floor uh, for her purse i look for her anxiety medicine but it's not in her purse anywhere just a wallet a pack of gum and a lint roller did you put them in the checked bag shit she mutters her eyes still closed she is gripping the arms of her seat wincing as if she is in pain i don't pretend to know what it's like dealing with anxiety she tried to explain it to me last week i asked her what the anxiety felt like she said it's like a shiver running through my blood up until that point I had always assumed anxiety was just a heightened sense of worry but she explained it was an actual physical feeling she feels it running through her body like tiny waves of electric shocks after she told me that I just held her in my arms I felt helpless I always feel helpless now when it comes to her when is which is why I go out of my way to make sure she is okay and she is not okay right now do you want to wait it out in the bathroom i ask her she nods so i grab laila's hand and help her out of her seat when we get to the front of the cabin i lean in uh, to the flight attendant she is having a panic attack i am going in with her until it passes The flight attendant takes one look at Leila and her expression immediately turns sympathetic she closes the curtain to block off the view of the bathroom door from the first class cabin there is no room 
for us to move once i close the door i wrap one arm around leila's waist and pull her face to my chest with my free hand i wet uh, a paper towel in the sink and then press it against the back of her neck while i hold her she told me last week that my arms work better for her than her wetted blanket i don't know how i feel about it, about that being the one thing that seems to ease her panic i would like for her to figure out how to fight these without my help i can't always be here with her and i worry about what will happen if she has one when i am not around i hold her for a moment feeling her body trembling against mine want me to tell you where we are going i ask her maybe not knowing is making your anxiety worse she say, shakes her head i don't want to ruin your surprise i planned to tell you after take off anyway i pull her face from my chest so i can see her reaction we are going to the corazon del payas i booked it for two whole weeks there isn't an immediate reaction but then after a wee, after a few seconds she makes a confused face where i try to hide my concern but this has been happening a lot things should easily remember take a moment to come back to her the doctor said it's normal after brain damage but it's still jarring every time i realize just how much she lost that lo that took a long time to accept that she has brain damage it's minor the but noticeable especially when it takes her a little longer to recall things that were huge for him for us i i don't take it personal but i still feel the sting the bed and breakfast i say familiarity eases back into her expression oh yeah aspen's wedding garrett's shitty band there is a flicker of excitement in her eyes the breakfast actually it's not a bed and breakfast anymore the place is up for sale now it shut down three months ago i emailed the realtor and asked if asked if we could rent it for a couple of weeks we have the more we have the whole place to ourselves i know just me and you what about the cooks and housekeepers it's not a business anymore so we will cook ourselves i already had groceries delivered i can tell she is still trying to overcome the minor panic attack so i continue talking to keep her mind off it aspen and chad want to come stay a night it's only a couple hours from Vicheta. They are thinking Friday. Leila nods and then presses her cheek against my shirt. That will be nice. I told her for another couple of minutes until she is no longer shaking. <clears throat> you feel better? Yes. Good. I run my hand over her hair and kiss the top of her head. We should go sit back down. Everyone on the plane will be talking about the couple who joined the Mile High Club. She doesn't release me. Instead, she brings her mouth close to mine and her hand begins to crawl down my chest all the way to the bottom on button on my jeans. Let's not make them liars. She stands on her tiptoes until her lips are pressed against mine. I know she thinks this is probably some fantasy of mine. I would be lying if i said it wasn't but not right now not after she just came down from a panic attack it feels wrong i take her face in my hands not here okay she deflates a little we will be fast i kiss her not right now tonight i back away from her and open the door stepping aside to let her walk out she waves me out and shakes her hand her head I want to use the bathroom first, she says with a weak voice. Her eyes look like they are frowning when I close the door. I walk back to my seat feeling like a complete asshole for turning her down, but it would have made me an even bigger asshole if I had fucked her 60 seconds after she had a panic attack. That's not something I want her to get used to. I can't be the band aid for her wounds. I need to be what helps them heal how far away are we it's the first thing she has said since we got in the rental car she feel she fell asleep before we were even out of the airport terminal about 20 minutes 
she stretches her legs and arms and lets out a moaning sound that makes a makes me shift in my seat i have been regretting not bending her over the airplane sink since i walked out of the bathroom earlier the old leads would have taken her up on that offer twice probably sometimes i think i have changed more than she has my love for her has been over the top protective since her surgery i think i am too careful with her now i am careful when i speak to her careful when i hug her careful when i kiss her careful when i make love to her i flip my blinker on to take the next exit we need gas this is the last store before we get there you need a bathroom break leila shakes her head i am good after we get to the gas station and i get the nozzle looked into the place i walk over to the passenger door and open it Leila looks up at me shielding her eyes from the afternoon sun I grab her hand and pull out pull her out of the car I wrap my arms around her leaning her against the car and then I kiss the side of her head I am sorry it's all I say I don't even know if she was disappointed and I turn her down or if she even knows what I am sorry for but she sinks into a into me a little more it's okay she says you don't have to want me every second of the day the wind is blowing her hair in her face so i push it back with my hands when i do this i feel something in the strands of her hair they are clumped together sticky between my fingers i lean in and inspect her head in even though she tries to pull away her hair is dark so i cannot see the blood but when i pull my fingers back the tips of them are red you are bleeding am i she presses her fingers against her head right over her in session the gas nozzle clicks so i release her and pull it out of the gas tank let me park the car and i will come inside and help you clean it up after i park the car i search the store shelves until i find a small first aid kit i meet Leila in the women's restroom with it it's a one person stall so i lock the door to the bathroom behind me she faces me leaning against the sink i, I take a cotton swab in some pure side of the kit and clean the dried blood out of her hair first then from around the incision did you hit your head on something no it's pretty bad it should be healed by now it's been 6 months since she got the scar but every couple of weeks it breaks open again maybe you should get it checked out this week it doesn't hurt she says it will be fine i am fine i finish cleaning it up and then put some antiseptic on ointment on it i don't press her again but about why it's bleeding she will never admit that she does it herself but i have seen her picking at it I clean up the mess and close the first aid kit while Leila uses the restroom. She moves to the sink and washes her hands. I am leaning against the bathroom door watching her in the mirror. What if I am part of the problem? What if my hesitation to treat her exactly how I treated her before is holding her back somehow? We make low low a lot but it's different than it was before in those first couple of months together we uh, we were a combination of everything that makes sex good i was good and gentle with her but also reckless and rough sometimes all at once i did i didn't treat her like she was fragile i treated her like she was unbreakable maybe that's where i have gone wrong I need to treat her like the person she is trying to become again the Leila who was full of strength and spontaneity before that was ripped from her she is watching me in the mirror as i set first aid kit next to her on the sink our eyes stayed locked together as my hand bunches up her dress and then slips slowly between her thighs i can see the roll of her throat when i hook my finger around her panties and yank them down i place my right hand on the back of her neck and push her forward while i unbutton my jeans and then for the first time in 6 months i am not gentle with her at all